This is a great CTF challenge that will really test your skills in deobfuscating and reverse engineering JavaScript, especially if you're doing a black box assessment or hunting for client-side vulnerabilities. Before we dig into the challenge, I really encourage you to try and pwn the challenge yourself. You'll find a link to it in the description below. The goal is to find the correct input and get lead hacker. Anyways, if this was a real assessment or a bug bounty program, the very first thing I would do is to check the page source and observe the JavaScript files. If I found a lot of noise, there's a life saving plugin or a Chrome extension called Resources Saver. Basically, all what it does is gathering all the JavaScript and CSS files along with the current page that you're analyzing. And if you have minified or obfuscated JavaScript files, you can check this box and it will automatically beautify them for you. Once it downloads, just unzip the archive and you will find all the assets related to the page and you can start your analysis. But since we only have a single JavaScript file to analyze, there will be no need for all of that. Now looking at the JavaScript file that verifies our input, by the way, this is another Chrome extension called Syntax Tech that I use all the time when I'm doing static analysis and source code review, and it comes with different themes. It's really good for syntax highlighting instead of the boring page source. Now back to the code, we can see that here we have references to the DOM elements. Then this is the function that verifies the flag. If we scroll to the very bottom, we can find a listener for the click event that executes the check flag function. Once we click the check flag button. In the check flag function, you'll find a lot of obfuscated if blocks that need to be satisfied. Here static analysis will be hard and time consuming. So instead, let's use the developer tools, specifically the built-in debugger, to dynamically analyze the code. In the sources tab, click on the index.js file and set a breakpoint on the first if block and the check flag function. Then click on display and pause button to stop the execution at runtime when the breakpoint is hit. And then enter any input and click check flag. Once the breakpoint is hit, we can see that the length of our input is compared with this mathematical expression. We don't need to calculate this expression. We can just highlight it, then hover over it and the debugger will calculate it for us. So here we can see that our input must be 52 characters long. Now let's rerun and input any dummy 52 characters string. In the next if block, we can see that the first five and less characters in our input are checked and compared with the output of these from char code functions. Similar to the input length, we can highlight each expression and hover over it and get the final output. Before we proceed, let's keep track of the flag at the very top. In the next if block, we can see that our input from index 5 to 7, its binary representation is being checked with these three binary numbers. Using Python to convert these numbers to their ASCII representation, we get the next portion of the flag. Moving on to the next if block, we can see the character at index 8 from our input is being converted to its hex representation and then XORed with hex2f and compared with hex70. In the XOR encoding or encryption, if we have the key and the cipher text, we can easily retrieve the plain text if we XOR them together. So doing that, we get back the original text, which is an underscore. In the next if block, a substring from index 9 to 24 is being converted to its hex representation and compared with these hex bytes. We can easily decode this string using Python and get the next part of the flag. In the next if block, we have another underscore. Here our ember from index 25 to 27 is being converted to its octa representation and compared with these octa numbers. Using Python again, we can get their ASCII representation. And here we have another underscore. This if block is a little bit tricky because we have several nested functions compared with these hex bytes. So let's break it down to understand what's going on here. Assume that this is our input. When we call the substring function to get part of our string, we have to give it two parameters. The first one is the index at which we want this substring to start from. Then the second one is the index at which we want this string to end. So in this case here we want the substring from index 1 to index 4 because we will stop at index 5. After that we call the split function on our substring. If there is no delimiter passed to the split function, it will split on every single character in our substring, which is the case here. Then we call the reverse function which will reverse the elements in the array returned by the split function. And then we call the join function to join all the elements in the array into a string. 
Basically, all we're doing here is reversing this string, but JavaScript has an ugly abstraction of doing things, unfortunately. Lastly, we convert this reverse string to its hex representation. After that, we have another underscore. In this if block, the shell and sum of the substring from index 41 to 45 is being compared with this hash. We can use crack station or any hash cracking tool to decrypt this SHA1 hash. Using crack station, we get the plain text. Here we have yet another underscore. In the last if block, we do the same thing we did previously. The only difference is that we wrap the output in the B2A function, which will base64 encode the output. Using Python again, we get the last part of the flag. Putting all the pieces together, we get the final flag. The developer tools are super hacky lead tools.